In this video, we define serial and parallel transmission, compare synchronous and asynchronous data transmission, and describe the purpose of start and stop bits. Data transmission can occur over very short distances, e.g. from one component of a computer to another, short distances from, say, a computer to a local printer, and over long distances, e.g. from one computer to another over a global network. When data is being transmitted, we need to consider three essential factors. Firstly, there's the direction of data transmission. Can data be transmitted in one direction or both? The method of transmission. So how many bits can be transmitted at once? And finally, how will the data transmission itself be synchronized? Now note, this section isn't strictly in the AQA specification, but provides some useful knowledge on the basics of data transmissions. First, we have simplex transmission. This is where data travels in only one direction via a single cable. This type of transmission might be used to send data from one computer to a monitor, as traffic only needs to move in one direction. Next, we have half duplex. Data can travel in both directions via a single cable, but not at the same time. This type of transmission occurs when using parallel printer cables. A file is sent to the printer, and the printer can respond with error codes such as ink low. However, the printer needs to wait until the computer has finished sending the file. And then lastly, we have full duplex. Data can travel in both directions at the same time using two communication channels. This is the most common form of data transmission and is typically used in network cables, both with inlands and across the internet. With these cables, data can be sent and received at the same time. So let's now have a look at serial versus parallel transmission. We already know we can transmit data using simplex, half duplex and full duplex modes, but data can also be sent via serial or parallel. These two sets of terms can be used in conjunction with, for example, we could have a full duplex serial transmission or a half duplex parallel transmission. So with a serial data transmission, individual bits of data are sent one at a time via a single cable. With parallel data transmission, individual bits of data are sent simultaneously via a series of cables. You need to be able to compare the two and understand the advantages and disadvantages of each. So serial transmission is commonly used with USB, the universal serial bus interface. It has minimal interference, it's simple and low cost, and it has a better reliability over long distances. But it has lower transmission speeds than the alternative. Parallel is commonly used in integrated circuits and random access memory or RAM. It has very fast transmission speeds. Data can be sent in both directions at the same time, but it can only be used over very short distances and is more prone to interference. In a parallel situation, separate bits of data may travel at different speeds via the various cables. This can cause the bits to arrive out of sync, a problem we refer to as skew. That is why parallel cables are only used over very short distances and it's another disadvantage against serial cables. So let's have a look at advantages in serial transmission. Well, due to the problem of skew, parallel wires are unreliable beyond distances of two meters. Serial is reliable over much longer distances. Serial is cheaper. There is much less complexity in connections and the physical size of the cable is smaller, thus resulting in lower costs. Parallel wires can suffer from what we call crosstalk, that's interference between the different lines. This interference can result in data corruption. The stronger the signal, the worse the problem. This is largely avoided with serial transmission. And also serial transmission suffers from little interference at high frequencies. As a result, the signal frequency can be much higher than with parallel. This results in higher net data transfer rates. 
As well as transmitting data in either a serial or parallel way, we also talk about sending data using synchronous and asynchronous transmission methods. Synchronous transmission occurs when data is transferred at regular intervals and synchronized via a clock pulse. Parallel communication often uses synchronous transmission, helping ensure reliable, real-time data transmission, e.g. voice over IP and videos. With asynchronous transmission, each byte is sent separately as soon as it's ready, as opposed to waiting for the pulse of a clock signal. Each character is sent with a parity bit, a start bit, and a stop bit or period, resulting in a total of 10 bits being sent for a single character. This provides the receiving device with a way of knowing when new data has arrived and provides a short gap between sets of bits to prepare for the arrival of the next. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How can data be transmitted? What are the advantages of serial over parallel transmission? And what is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous transmission?